Thanks very much. I wanted to start this morning with a real tribute um, to friends and family of so many of us um, in Christchurch. Uh, five years ago today, the earthquake, the big earthquake there, and uh, for me, it's extremely fitting to be in Wellington because I was here on that day. Um, I don't actually have the emotional connection to Christchurch like so many of us who actually experienced the earthquakes. I was at a conference in Wellington uh, talking about the social media impact and disasters and where that might go and how, how that could work based on our initial project down there, which was called the UC Student Base for Earthquake Cleanup. Um, I thought it was a very catchy name. Uh, and since then, over the last five years, um, our little group has... Uh, Worked a lot in Christchurch, worked a lot with different people, organizations right around the world, sharing the story about what was after the earthquakes. For me, uh, the most beautiful part of New Zealand is the micro interactions we have with each other all the time, everywhere. The, it's been talked about a bit over the last few days, the small, little, uh, the friendly Kiwi culture, the, that identity that really New Zealand is known for internationally. And it's interesting at the moment going through the, the flag process, for instance, and looking at how much of our identity actually comes out in that. What is the real New Zealand identity? And so today I'd like to frame my talk around, and the story around New Zealand identity, and what is, for me, that real core of it, and where is that going? The story of Christchurch and the tsunami and the Farmy Army and everyone that helped out after the earthquakes and there's so many groups, uh, it's well told. There was silt. There was council and a civil defence responding to a major disaster. There was a whole lot of us, everyday people from all walks of life who wanted to help out and there was no path clear for us to help out. So a group of us got on board Facebook, started this Facebook page, and eventually we had 11,000 students keen to help out in, the, in, the, in Christchurch. For the last five years, that movement has just continued. It's morphed in a few different directions. There's been those paths that we went down you know, very gung-ho, we're, we're amazing, we're going to do this, we're going to go here, we're going to build this network of clubs. That didn't work very well. Uh, we had this big, um, this big approach of, of, uh, of, of okay, how do, we, how do we sort of, um, how, how do we run this thing? What are all the different ways of possibilities of growing and changing this thing? Some of it worked, some of it didn't. If I'm completely honest, most of it didn't work. The beautiful thing about it is that the group now and our little team in Christchurch, there's 23 students who run the Student Volunteer Army in Christchurch. They are predominantly second and third year students who lap up every single bit of, of knowledge that anyone passes on to them. It's the most remarkable thing, sitting in a group with them and sharing them something that I take so for granted that for them, it's just this incredible change of knowledge receiving. They just learn something new and away they go. The student army for me and the process of Christchurch, it's all been around leadership. There's been all these leaders that have been created in Christchurch and every different type of definition of leadership. We talk about leadership in this way that it's some sort of thing up here. And, and personally, uh, as a guy that was on the news an awful lot in the last five years, uh, I, I, I got kind of caught up in the circle of like, up here in this, this newsy and self-importance, when actually the most important conversations and this event inspired me a lot last year with it, and a couple of conversations with some of the Inspiral Cube um, team and reading a lot, was how do we move this thing from trying to be an organization but actually just to realize it's a movement. There is nothing organizational really about that. It's a movement. There's a one very good seed idea at the bottom of it, and that's that uh, people like to help out other people in their communities. And you just need to find better ways to make that happen. So we're now like searching for, uh, searching for answers and searching for, oh, God, what are we going to do on the five-year anniversary of the earthquakes? We're trying to find this big legacy project, find this way to help out. And you know, how do we further the, the, you know, the volunteer army? And we realized actually that was the completely wrong question to be asking. The thing that we needed to continue on with was the very, very seed underneath 
the student volunteer army. And beneath the branding, beneath the people, beneath any personalities and egos and everything, was this fact that after a major chaotic event, a whole lot of people went and helped each other. The crisis and the disaster that's come after the earthquake in Christchurch has been when we've forgotten that. The challenge, our challenge as a country, is how we learn from the best of Christchurch, the best of this way of a disaster recovery, the best of every learning and lesson that comes out of it, and how do we go back to that place. And for me, uh, it's so, so simple. Uh, Little actions everywhere, micro actions everywhere, is actually what makes a difference uh, for me in this world. Yesterday, uh, there's a group of us, about 20, we went out and painted this fence. Um, And just show of hands of who actually came. There's quite a few, I think, are here. There's about 20. A a lot of others aren't here as well. We went and just painted this fence. We arranged it with the Upper Hutt City Council. Uh, I rang them up and said, look, there's this group of us at New Frontiers and we'd love to come and do a small service project um, in Upper Hutt. Uh, Is there something you can do? And they said right right away, well, we've got a whole group of young taggers. And these taggers, they love going and actually working with a street artist and making a mural across this big wall. Um, But sometimes the prepare... The preparation for that does take, a, does take a bit. So if you guys can come and help us prepare this wall and prepare these spaces for artwork to go on and prepare it so the neighbours actually love the place, that would be a huge help to us. And so collectively yesterday, we fast-forwarded this programme of work uh, that the Upper Hutt City Council, Denise, that's the lovely lady that's running it, she fast-forwarded it a couple of months, and these guys are going to start that pretty soon. The thing that I was looking up last night was actually what about the space that we volunteered in? Actually, it's called, it's called Keller Lane, and sort of it's, it's a really sort of bit of a rundown old lane behind a garage in Upper Hutt. Nothing special, I thought. But I found out actually it's named after Jack Keller. This is Jack and Johnny Keller. Um, he wrote the history of Upper Hutt. He was a, a steward of this community for years, and did this, this is a great photo online of, of him on his London book tour of, of actually sharing the knowledge of Upper Hutt, really looking back to, to why are we in this place? What, do, what, what is this way, this little place that we're in and where can we go with it? We're there yesterday thinking we're amazing painting this fence, but actually it's not just about painting the fence to look forward, it's about the, the fact that, that Jack, this lane, was named after him and we just restored it to its beauty of that it was. A few years ago, I was uh, very privileged to go up to the Kermitic Islands in New Zealand, uh, um, right up uh, about halfway between here and Tonga. I'm one of the only 500 people in the world who have ever set foot on the islands, Raoul Island, where the, where the birds just come and sit on your arm, where, where the, the, you, you dive in the water, and, and if you've got goggles on, you just see the fish moving everywhere around. The beauty of New Zealand is there um, like I've never seen it, because it is our country. It's now the largest marine reserve in the world. Uh, and this incredible place that, 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 that is part of our country, but we, we don't really know much about. They're slowly returning it to what New Zealand used to be before people arrived here. And, 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 and it's actually, we, have, we, we know how to do that. And I love the fact that small work by volunteers gets, you, gets us there and gets us going. Uh, Scala Service Lane was then a, um, a panel beating shop. Had a very famous panel beater, Bob's Panel Beaters on there. And, and, and that had a sense of identity too. And we, again, restored that yesterday. <laughs> and that's the thing in Christchurch, that we had all these cones. Um, oh, yeah, this is just uh, this, this Joe uh, painting, up, painting up a storm. In Christchurch, uh, it's actually the tiny actions that have had the biggest impact in the last five years. As a city full of road cones... Um, the simplest thing that I think has had the biggest impact, one of the biggest impacts around mental health, um, has been this. Just put a flower in the top of a road cone. That tiny little action completely changes the way we see an object. That tiny action completely changes the way we interact with the space around us. This anniversary, uh, as we were looking back of how do we further the real seed underneath the earthquake, um, we were thinking about important days of national significance, uh, important public holidays. Instead of just mourning and, and, and just looking back, um, we wanted to do something active on important days like Anzac Day, Waitangi Day, um, Cape Shepherd Memorial Day, other, other important days of our history that we, we don't really understand. 
And so this group of us are really excited to be launching today a concept called Serve for New Zealand. Serve for New Zealand is around doing one hour of volunteering on public holidays in New Zealand. We've partnered with the RSA, with the uh, University of Canterbury, and the, with the SVA to launch this concept. It's just an idea. It's a movement. Because we feel on such as Anzac Day, it's not quite right to go to the beach in the afternoon. It doesn't feel quite right to just be completely self-absorbed on that day. How do we further the seed of what we learned from Christchurch, which was, which was about people helping each other on important days? Thanks. In Nepal last year after the disaster, um, a number of us were lucky to work there and, um, and, and support it from New Zealand. Um, again, a group of students there. Two of us went and coached a team of 30 students in Nepal how to respond to their own disaster. They lapped up every bit of knowledge that came from the whole universe around them. They went and built these amazing little shelters. They cost $120 each. They mobilized 300 of their peers to, to work. And just the very notion of giving them some support, some permission and a little bit of encouragement to do something completely changed the way that they interacted with their space around them. And the global scale of like massive disaster response, it's, it's a minute little thing. But for these guys, the leadership skills that they learned throughout that has forever changed their life. And um, 500 people got a temporary shelter that they could live in. Serve for New Zealand is just about that. It's about sharing little connections through service, sharing, passing on knowledge, whether you want to, you know, one of, the, one of the concepts on there is actually, it might be a bit ageist, but it's adopt a granny, to go and, to go and just increase social connectivity to someone else. Um, my granddad also said to me, we really would be really good if um, we could get some young people along to teach them how to hoe a garden properly, because he doesn't think anyone knows how to hoe a garden properly anymore. <laughs> Other projects like just taking, making some muffins and taking them to a neighbor, or doing whatever, that's what the campaign's about. So it's really exciting to launch it today. I've got a little video here which um, shows the, the volunteer project from yesterday, um, and... Uh, but we're just really delighted, um, particularly here with the support of, um, of uh, the whole team, the Kiwi Connect team, uh, and, and uh, to, to be here and uh, to be able to share this, notion, this concept. It's just an idea. It's just a movement. And we'll see where it goes. Um, I've got no idea. We're going to do it on Anzac Day this year, um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, my dream would be, and Yosef's helped particularly inspire a lot of this, um, is that it can be done on a number of days throughout New Zealand's history, New Zealand's calendar. Um, and you could learn about why that day's important, and then go and do an hour of volunteer service at the same time. So, thanks.